Hey, this is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps. I want to get you started with Xcode. So what we're going to do is go to either Launchpad and find Xcode, or you can use Spotlight. If you go to the top right, you click on the little magnifying glass, you can start typing Xcode. Let's go ahead and open it up. And now we're in Xcode. So you may or may not see any kind of dialogues. I'm trying to figure out if Xcode has changed before it has asked for admin privileges that may or may not be the case anymore. There might be some settings to agree to. So let's go ahead and create our first iPhone app and see if we can run into any of those situations. All right, so what we do is we do a single view application. This is kind of like the weather app. So we're gonna click on that to get started. This is the little template wizard that's gonna take us through. We can call this my first app. And you can just put your name for the organization. The organization identifier just needs to be unique. So you could do something like your website in reverse. It doesn't really matter at this point until you're trying to get it on the app store. We're gonna go with Swift. We're gonna uncheck all the unit tests and core data. We don't need that to start. And then we're gonna hit next. Once we do that, we're gonna put it on our desktop. And I like to create a folder. So let's go ahead and do that called projects. It just makes it super easy to get to and we can select it and then create the project inside of there. All right, so now Xcode is gonna ask for a couple of things. So here we're seeing one of those things. It wants your contacts, this is so that it can include information about like your name in your source code files for the copyrights. Hit okay. And let's see if we can run this. I always like to run on a smaller iPhone. So select the iPhone 8. The iPhone 8 Plus is the default for some reason. And it's really, really big. So start with an eight. It's gonna be a lot more manageable in terms of screen size. Then we're gonna hit play in the top left corner. And if everything works out on your computer, you should see a simulator appear. So I'm gonna move that over here. And you're gonna wait for this to boot up. This boot up process can take a little bit of time. I'm on a fast Mac, so it should be pretty quick. And one of the new things that the iPhone simulator does is it will print out what device it is and what version of iOS it's running. All right, so here the developer tools actually needs the admin access. So you need to give it an admin user. So right now I'm logged into a non-admin user. So I'm gonna to have to log in as a admin user. And I think this is one of my admin accounts. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so that worked, but Xcode failed. And Xcode failed because we didn't have the privileges, so we're gonna have to try that again. A lot of times when you're just getting started, you're gonna see strange error messages like this one where it can't attach the PID. That is the process ID, and it was just trying to connect to the simulator. So we're just gonna hit okay. A lot of times you can just hit play and it might fix itself. So let's go ahead and try that one more time. And here we have our first iPhone app working. Now, to really verify that this is actually working, let's go over to your storyboard file. And this is a drag and drop editor that we can drag content onto. So if you've selected main.storyboard, don't select a launch screen.storyboard, then we can come over to the right panel. And if you don't see this panel, you're gonna click this button in the top right corner. That's gonna make this panel slide out. Once you do that, you're looking for the object library, which is this thing way down in the right corner. And on this, we're gonna scroll down past some of these settings and we can just add a button. This will be the easiest thing to add to the screen. So we'll just double click on it and say, press me. Once we do that, its size is gonna change. So I'm just gonna recenter it on this iPhone. We're gonna run on the iPhone 8 simulator. So let's just start it up again. It's currently running. So this is another dialog. We can actually get this one to stop appearing if you just click on this message to stop the app. Now, this is kind of like a helpful thing that Xcode has built in. I don't find it helpful when I wanna run the app, I wanna run the app. So stop whatever is running and let's start the new version because as we make changes, we wanna see what those changes look like. So let's go ahead, hit stop. And I hit that checkbox. So it's not gonna do that again. So next time we run the app, it's just going to start. All right, so we have our iPhone simulator. We can just hit press me, and now we have a button press. We've just learned how to create your very first iPhone app. You've just learned. You've just learned how to create your very first iPhone app. 
Now we're going to, in the next video, get started with Xcode. I'm going to give you an introduction to all of the panels so that you can find things and move around without getting confused in the follow-on lessons. Let's get started. Hey, this is Paul. Real quick before you go, I've got all the source code over here on the right. If you want to download the source code, go to the link that's over on the right or down below. You can grab that code. If you like that, click the like button. Also, before you go, once you go to this site, you'll see a little form. If you fill that out, type your email address in here and click the download now button. That's going to send you an email with all the source code. So just check your email in order to get started. All right, so this has got a lot of design resources from Sketch to PNGs to Xcode projects. is going to be very useful. Lastly, click the subscribe button, which is over my head. If you want to get updates when I have new videos, I'm going to be posting regular content on a weekly basis. And then last but not least, just like this video if you found any of the topics that I talked about helpful. I'm going to be showing you the next step in the next video. So let's go do that.